Thomas the Tank Engine. If you haven't heard of him, you're clearly from another planet. Everyone grew up with at least one rendition of the beloved railway locomotive. Whether it be the original books, the first Thomas the Tank Engine TV series, or Thomas and Friends, that was my introduction. Or... Stop! Stop! What? James's tank is overflowing. No, no, it was a bit more. Oh, no, that tank's too full. <laughs> Close the filler gap, please. <laughs> Oh no! Or the newest rendition, which is the new CGI series, which gets a bad rap if you ask me. But what's common throughout every series are the surprisingly dark moments. And that's what this video is going to be about. I did this before with Cursed Teletubbies, now we're going to be looking at Cursed Thomas the Tank Engine. Also stay at home. Now let's get to the actual video. So I've literally just looked up the top 10 darkest Thomas the Tank Engine episodes. And look, look at that thumbnail, just, just wow. Well, you know that's the one we're clicking on. After all, since it's the top result, it must be the best one, right? Here are the five creepiest Thomas the Tank Engine stories. Number one, the sad story of Henry ends with a train walled up forever. Oh uh, yes, I was hoping they'd talk about this one. This is the only especially creepy episode I do remember watching as a kid, so I remember this properly creeped me out when I saw it. It was just like, like, trains are, a li are living beings in this world and you could, and they're just perfectly fine with putting a, up a wall against them. Remember when you were about five or six years old and you'd done something a bit stupid so your mum sends you up to your room for an hour to think about what you'd done? This is that, but taken up nine whole f***ing levels. On a particularly nasty day, Henry decides he's gonna chill out in a tunnel rather than let his paint job get ruined by the train. Sir Topham Hatt isn't having it. He's got a railway to run after all, and they don't call you the fat controller if you don't demonstrate your doughy domain over your subjects on a regular basis. Alright, I guess now's a good time to talk about the fat controller. I know his real name's Sir Topham Hat, but come on, no one calls him that. They call him the fat controller. The fat controller's got this mental dictator-esque level of control over this railway. Now obviously in real life, if one of the trains started going wrong and started doing stuff they weren't meant to do, then yes, that would be annoying and you would try to find a way to get around it and try and try to find a way for them to stop. But in this universe, trains are alive. They have their own feelings and their own emotions. If one of them starts misbehaving and starts not doing what they're supposed to do, you've got to try and reason with them. You've got to try and use emotional connection. You need to try and logically convince them why what they're doing is silly and try and convince them to go back to doing what they're meant to. But I guess to Mr. Fat over here, trains are nothing but slave labour. He instead decides, oh, you know what, mate? I'm just going to build a wall around this petty little train. I'm going to traumatise this little green b for life by making him self-isolate before it was cool. If he doesn't do exactly what I say 100% of the time, even if he's having a miserable day, I'll make him realise the consequences of his actions. If you don't do exactly what the authorities tell you 24-7, you are going to pay. Bruh. After a bit of back and forth, Henry makes it clear that under no circumstances will he leave the comfy confines of the tunnel. Taking a page from the Burger King Book of Wishes with Unforeseen Consequences, the Fat Controller lets Henry have his way. Forever. We shall take away your rails, he said, and leave you here for always and always and always. Henry doesn't think much of the threat at first, rolling his eyes, but soon enough, the Fat Controller and his men have bricked up the exit to Henry's tunnel. Wait, the Fat Controller is actually sadistic? What the hell? Alright, well, to cut the guy a bit of slack, Henry was, to be fair, being quite a b He didn't want to go outside because he didn't want his green paint to be ruined. Mate, you're one of the most respected trains on the railway. You'll get- you'll just get it repainted. It's not that big a deal. It's like when you hear about those people who spend 45 minutes it's doing their hair before they go to school. You want to know how many minutes I spent doing my hair? So I do understand why the fat man was a bit pissed at Henry, but going to that level? 
No, man. Because when you think about it, nothing is actually accomplished by blocking him in. I get why they needed him to get out of there. Seeing as he's blocking one of the tunnels, it's going to cause a lot of confusion and delay with everyone having to use the other one. Guy's got a railway to run, so I understand it from a business perspective. But when they figure out he's just not going to come out the tunnel, they decide, oh, let's block him in. That's, that'll fix everything. So now nothing has been accomplished. They're now at the exact same point they were in at the start of the conflict. They're arguably in an even worse position than before since Henry now can't leave the tunnel even if he wants to. The whole point of this was to get him out of the tunnel, not teach him the stupid lesson of all, be careful what you wish for. He wondered if he would ever be allowed to pull trains again. But I think he deserved his punishment. Don't you? No, he didn't! Shut the f*** up, Ringo! What part of, oh, I don't want to come out the tunnel because I don't want to ruin my paint justifies this fat bloke blocking him in forever? In what world is this justice being served? I guess the world of Sodor, apparently. Poop, poop, poop. Serves you right. I say we need to fight for the rights of trains, man. What's... Ugh. Why... <laughs> What's going on? Are people gonna think I'm genuinely angry? Or am I getting to nostalgia critic level? I've been recording for like 50 minutes probably and I don't even know how much I've said, so what, what do we do now? But anyway, that is the most infamous dark moment from Thomas the Tank Engine. But I actually have another moment to talk about and funny enough, it's actually from the CGI series. Slow down, Speedy! I know I am just neglecting the rest of the top 10, but I... I don't know how long I've been out here, man. I want to go back home. No, I, no, I am home. I, I this, this, the house is over there. I, 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 I'm staying home. Don't worry. All right. So there was a feature-length film about the Thomas the Tank Engine CG series, and it's called Hero of the Rails. And to me, this is proof that the CG series is actually severely underrated. Sure, the original series has a lot more personality, but I would honestly say this movie has the same quality level of writing as the original series. Essentially, the plot of the movie is that Thomas ends up stumbling across this really old train at the side of the road, or the, the railway I should say. The old train ends up talking about his backstory and how he ended up coming to Sodor from a, another another country, I guess. There are mountains and snow and sea. There are lots of railways. I was the strongest engine at home. I was called Master of the Railway. He was apparently the most famous train in the world at the time and then just ended up becoming forgotten about. I was the only engine on Sodor. They called me Master of the Railway here too. I was very happy. What happened? <sighs> I started to break down. The mechanics didn't have parts for me. So, I was put in a siding. I had to wait for parts for my island. I waited and waited. And now, I'm sure the parts will never come. The man's name was Master of the Railway and they just forgot about him. How does that happen? The train then goes on to talk about how he doesn't want Thomas to tell the Fat Controller because he's scared that he's gonna scrap him. I know. I'll go and get the Fat Controller. No, no! Please don't do that. You must not tell the Fat Controller. Why? I'm an old engine that cannot be repaired. I know what happens to old engines that cannot be really useful. They are scrapped and sent to the smelter's yard. These trains are genuinely living in fear about the fact that if they aren't considered useful enough, they're gonna die. Obviously, towards the end of the film, Thomas does end up telling the Fat Controller hesitantly. And of course, the Fat Controller doesn't scrap him. And I'm not saying of course because it's a kid's film and they're not gonna kill one of the main characters. I'm saying it because this train was a bloody celebrity back in the day. Of course, he's not gonna scrap him. Did you say hero? Yes, sir. You mean, the Master of the Railway? Yes, sir. Why did you think I would scrap 
The master of the railway, Thomas. Well, to be fair, mate, you did just completely abandon him and forget about him for 50 odd years. So scrapping might not be completely out of the picture. Well, actually, he might not have been leader of the railway when Hero was about, so it might not have necessarily been his fault, but his... Well, to be fair, he was probably given leadership of the railway by his father, so... It, it, it's at least his bloodline that Sir Topham Hat bloodline is to blame. Actually, now that I think about it, the fact that he's called Sir Topham Hat implies that he was knighted by the Queen. The Queen knighted this absolute monster. This madman, nicknamed the Fat Controller, is not someone who you want to have the title of a knight. But anyway, that's my two cents. You're allowed to disagree with me if you want. But in my opinion, we need to cancel the Fat Controller. Also, just... Just a hole in the wall. Also, 100 subs by the end of June. Let's get it. Wow.